Hello everybody, so I am uploading a new tutorial, full-length, um, non-edited tutorial, and um, I'm in the process of doing that now, but I wanted to show you where I'm at with this painting. I'm actually not done with it yet, um, but I wanted to go ahead and just start uploading the videos and, and just do that now, but here I am with this painting, and I'll just give it a look at it here for you guys. So this is going to be a tutorial about doing water and then underwater artifacts like rocks or maybe logs or something like that as you can see here and then just rocks in general and just how I do that and how I go through a painting like this and so I'm about an hour away from getting this one done I got maybe another hour to go um, so it's not finished yet there's going to be something here that I haven't added yet and um, I kind of just kind of fine-tune um, fine-tune this until it's finished but I got about an hour to go I already have about four hours of footage here that I'm uploading. And so I'm gonna break those up in about hour long segments for you guys to start watching now. But I just wanna let you know that um, as of right now, I haven't finished this painting yet, but I'm getting very close. And so I'm gonna give you some up close shots of it to show you what it looks like now. And uh, here we're gonna focus on the foreground water there. And you can see the surface of the water as well as underneath water, you know, rocks underneath the water and what that looks like. And um, of course the rocks that are sitting above the water. All right, so you can kind of see what that looks like. And this tutorial will be about doing water and rocks at a coastal scene. And this is at Leo Carrillo State Park in Southern California, a little north of Malibu. And um, I was here at this location uh, in December on vacation. And I took a bunch of uh, pictures with my iPhone to uh, turn into paintings here, so. That's where I'm at now, and so I just wanted to give you this little preview of, uh, of what this painting is shaping up to look like, and um, I hope you enjoy the tutorial, and um, again, I appreciate you guys' comments and, um, and subscribing to my channel, and um, I'm kind of working out a schedule where I'm working a lot, so I just don't have a lot of time to paint, so I'm trying to work on, on time when I can actually develop, give my, you know, give time to painting and stuff like that, and making videos, so... Hopefully it'll be more consistent here as I find a good schedule for that. So, all right, everybody, I just want to give you a quick video uh, again. Thanks for watching. And um, we will pick this up again. Pro I'll, probably, I'll probably pick this up again later on, maybe, hopefully this weekend or sometime during the week and finish it out. Okay, thanks. All right, guys, it's time for another full length tutorial video. I haven't done one in a couple months and I've been dying to get back to the easel here and do another video for you guys. And so today's video is going to be on water and rocks. And this is going to be the scene that we're going to be painting for this one. This is a picture that I took at uh, Leo Carrillo State Park. It's in Southern California, north of Malibu, California. Um, going up Highway 1, you'll come to this state park. Um, and there's a campsite there, as well as a couple beaches that you can uh, park at and explore. This is one of the beaches. And um, I thought it would be a good video to do because it shows a lot of uh, water, obviously, with the ocean here and um, rocks, these uh, walk rocks and shallow tide pools here. And then we see some under underwater rocks, as you can see there. And so uh, painting that or learning how to paint that, I think, would be a fun exercise. Um, and I like the composition. And again, it's my own my own photo for my eye for my iPhone. Okay, so that is the scene. Uh, this was taken, this picture was taken about a month ago, a little, little bit over a month ago, as I was down there on a vacation. And uh, we went out to the beach on the afternoon, went for a nice drive, stopped at this park, and I took a lot of pictures to uh, create some paintings from. And I already created one earlier, about uh, a couple weeks ago, I did this one of the same location, but on the other side of this. So if you look at this photo here, there's that, um, it's not a lighthouse, it's more like a lifeguard shack or a lookout house of some sort, right? But um, it is active. Um, there's people there and um, some sort of lookout house. And um, so that's one side of it. And then the other side would be this scene. This is a painting I did a couple weeks ago. And this is on the Bristol Smooth paper that we'll be working on today as well. 
I just wanted to show you this painting. Um, get up close here, you can see it. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it, um, particularly with the the rocks here, and then the the surf, the foamy part of the sea as it hits the shore. Um, the different colors I used in the ocean water here, here and here, and um, and the rocks, the way the water splashes on the rocks. It was a lot of fun to do. Okay, so there's that painting. That's on a piece of 14 by 17 Bristol smooth paper. Um, great paper. That's the same paper we're going to use here for this painting. I just want to show you that this is awesome paper for oil pastels if you like a smooth surface. Um, it's great paper. The oil does not bleed to the other side. It's very thick and durable and it's not going to slide off. And uh, I've been using this quite a bit lately and uh, I really like it. So there's that one painting I did. Had a lot of fun painting that. I just wanted to show you. I thought you would like to see that. Let's go ahead and set that aside. Here, I'm going to put this over here. Get it out of the way. I haven't applied a fixative to it, so i got to be careful with how I handle it. But um, here's today's reference photo again. And we're working on a 14 by 17 smooth Bristol smooth paper. And here are my oil pastels. Again, using up to five brands. Um, I do use Paul Rubens, but I use them separately. So I'm not using Paul Rubens in this video, as I'll just be using everything from here. And uh, we'll start with the Cray Paws Expressionist. That's what this is right here. This is just a regular gray. You either go with a gray or a brown or sometimes a blue. We'll take that out too. Um, I like to start with Cray Paws because it's a harder pastel. And since I layer colors on top of each other, it's just easier to start with the harder and then layer the soft stuff on top. All right. So let's take a look at the scene again. Kind of deciding where to start. I'm just kind of looking at the layout of the land here. These rocks, kind of seeing where it is from the top of the photo as compared to the bottom part. It looks like it's about one third of the way down it starts. So kind of about right here. Right, I'm just kind of guessing there and it kind of goes over and kind of goes down like that. So let's just kind of create that shape of the rock. Not worry about the, the little lifeguard shack at the moment. Just kind of worry about the rock itself. Kind of goes up a little bit like this and kind of comes down. All right, something like this. And then that goes down again. <laughs> and then uh, it kind of peaks again right here. Oops. And then down right here. It goes right to the middle, middle of the page for the most part. Okay, and then um, there'll be water in here stuff. But right now I'm just kind of getting the shape of this main rock piece here that kind of comes out. And I'm seeing where, it, I'm just looking at my my reference photo I'm just kind of just guessing by hand where that will kind of sit okay there'll be like a beach right here with some sand and that'll be in shadow we have a light that's coming from kind of the back top left of the lights kind of like from up this angle here right so it's creating some nice shadows in this area here we'll get those in later okay this will be a beach here and then um, over here we have another rock and I might have made this come out a little bit too far so maybe it actually comes down right there actually but it's okay you just make your best guess some rocks and stuff and then we have the uh, sea itself the levelness of the sea which is in the background here you can kind of see it kind of in the back like that I'm just gonna go straight across I can make that straight across here and then we have another large rock that kind of comes up here and comes down like that, something like that, All right? Some rocks here and stuff, All right? Now it's a little bit different than the photo. I have a little bit more sea showing, so I might have made this rock a little bit too big, so we'll have to come down and kind of fix that a little bit, but not a big problem at this stage. Okay, so there's kind of the main piece there, right there. 
more or less. Now, when I think about painting all of these rocks here, it's very, um, it's, it's very difficult to try to think about painting them individually. That's um, it's way too consuming for my brain and uh, kind of a nightmare to even think about having to do individual rocks here when it comes to this. So I'm going to treat it as one subject, okay? So in the foreground here, we have these boulders, these uh, boulders that you could actually walk on. And um, instead of trying to paint every individual boulder, something like this, which would take forever and something I don't really want to do, I'm just going to take my gray and just kind of make one shape of it, roughly where it where most of those are going to be at. And um, that's about right here. Okay, just in general, where those rocks will be. Now when I go into the details of this, we'll start defining individuals by using shadow and light. But for right now, the mass of those little boulders is gonna be about right there. And there's some over here. Okay, and then there's some bigger ones here in the foreground, way down here. We'll kind of kind of do shapes of those here. All right, it doesn't have to be exact to the photo, just a general idea of the shape and size. Obviously, things in the foreground you want to have to be bigger, right? Bigger rocks here than smaller rocks as you go back into the scene. All right, kind of set up that uh, three-dimensional space and idea in your brain. And we'll just kind of cover this up with the gray. Okay, keep it simple at this stage. Don't uh, overcomplicate it and um, don't think of the rocks as individuals. Think them as, um, you know, kind of a big one subject kind of kind of thing. Every once in a while you can put in an individual rock here that where the water is going to be. But um, if I were to do each one of these, it would be very consuming for me and confusing and uh, not fun to do. Um, so I try to simplify that here with my brain. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking at my photo. I'm just seeing where those rocks are and I'm just trying to treating it that way. And over here we have a beach here. So we have the big rock here, here where the, the guard shack is gonna be up in this section. I'm not gonna draw that right now. But right here we have where the beach meets the water. Okay, and that's kind of like right there. Right, and we have some more rocks in that area here. And then uh, right around here, excuse me, we have some rocks that kind of come out. And then we have a, a small wave that's breaking right about in this section. It kind of comes about right like this. That'll be some breaking waves. You can see that right here, very small waves. This is a very calm day. It wasn't um, no big waves in this area. We had these really tiny waves here that were kind of breaking right into this uh, shallow area. Okay, that was happening about right there. All right, and then of course we have that guard shack here. Now I'm not going to really render this out right now, but roughly, let's see, the size of that shack is going to be about something like like this. Okay, and I'm just kind of very loose. Kind of put it there. I'm not going to really get detailed on that. All right, and let's go ahead and fill this in with the gray. Okay, so I'm using this Cray Paws and uh, we're using the Bristol Smooth paper. You can see as I drag color across it, it does leave the color deposited on the paper. You kind of see the texture. Even though there is no texture of the paper, it's just smooth, but the oil pastel leaves like this textured look on it. And uh, right now I'm just going to fill that in. Okay, this will be this will be the background of the level of the ocean back in that back distance there. And then uh, we have another big kind of rock coming here, right about like this. And then again, more ocean water back in there. Okay, and then we have all these rocks in the foreground that we're just treating as one subject. with some individuals here every once in a while. Kind of set it up a little bit. 
and you can just do that very easy just keep this part easy we're going to come in with some blue in between this and kind of kind of define where the water is a little bit easier here okay you want to be loose and not only on your application but in your brain you want to keep things very simple don't over over complicate things um, don't make it hard for yourself just treat things like individual rocks as one one mass of rocks if that makes any sense it's a lot easier to think about when you're going about painting something like this okay all right and let's go ahead and take a finger here and just kind of push the color around this is just a gray but you can see how easy this is to do on this Bristol smooth paper where I can literally take cray paws if I had a little bit of color deposit from some other stick that was on that gray that's okay just kind of spread the color around I'm kind of pushing it around and it uh, doesn't really matter how you do this you can do circles like this you can just take your thumb or your finger and kind of kind of drag it across but I just kind of want to color cover the paper up very important for me at this stage to just cover all the paper so there's no white of the paper showing I want the color to, to cover everything up even at this stage and just kind of spread it out a little bit right so uh, we'll fix that here but basically my water line in the back is going to go across like that some somewhere right there and then uh, we have another large boulder rock area right here that comes out of the water okay there's the tide and it's breaking there and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in with my thumb or finger or you can use a stump here now if you're using a different paper if, say if you're using a watercolor paper this process of blending like this is not going to be as easy you'll have to um, either use a softer oil pastel softer than the crepas or you'll have to use a terp a terpenoid terpenoid I mean mineral spirit something that'll cut through the oil and be able to spread it with a brush which is also possible to do but uh, since I'm using this Bristol Smooth, it's really easy to do it with my fingers, be able to spread this part. It's a big reason why I like um, using this smooth paper is this part of the process where you have to spread oil pastel and kind of cover, because it's a very difficult medium to do that with. It's not uh, liquid-like paint, and it tends to get, uh, it's, tend, you know, it's hard to blend, hard to spread the color out. Right, so uh, just kind of push that in, spread it around. Even we'll make sense of this later as we're going through it, and um, adding more and more details as we keep going. So I imagine this video in total will be anywhere from five to six hours long. It's typically where I'm at with uh, this format, this size, and. Um, and how I can get through something. So uh, I try to break these up into about hour segments. So I imagine there'll be five parts, maybe maybe six parts in total, roughly an hour each long. And um, that way it makes it easier to watch. You don't have to watch all five, six hours in one time, which uh, would be quite boring actually. You can kind of break it up or you can just watch certain segments so okay and you can see how easy it is to just spread that on this paper you can really just spread it down up around you can spread it right off I put a lot of pressure and I can really just take the color almost off All right there's a little bit more of that gray come back to my um, I have an iPad here that I'm looking at. So I'm just coming back here and looking again to find those, uh, find that landscape here and kind of redefine certain areas of it. And I like to use uh, with no papers on, on it and, and uh, draw like this. This is a very easy way for me to render stuff. 
Um, I feel like I have a lot of control of the oil pastel stick when I do it this way. Okay, there's the rock. Like we'll add some light and um, some shadow here to make it uh, have it make sense for you. But right now, more worried about the general shape of it and getting that uh, first part of it done here. Okay. All right. So let's go to a different color. Let's go to the sky. I'm going to use a blue here, um, maybe even this one, kind of different colors of blue. Okay, now if you look at the photo here, we have um, the sky. Okay, look at that color blue. Look at the way it it gradually um, goes from a darker to a lighter, very light blue, and then we have some distant clouds. But look at that color blue compared to the blue in the water. It's a very different kind of blue. Not the same. All right, this is a deeper, more of an ultramarine blue down in this section even here and more of a cerulean blue in the sky as it goes from a dark to a light okay so if I think about it as far as the colors go here this would be more of a good sky color so let's just start with this we'll just spread this up in the sky okay and I'm gonna go right over some of this gray here again I believe this is a cray pause or a uh, Van Gogh or a Mungio. It's one of those. I don't think it's a Mungio. Feels more like a Cray Paz to me or a um, Van Gogh. And the reason why I say that is it does matter for me at this stage what brand I'm using um, because I want to be able to stack a lot of color on top. And if I start with soft and then try to stack the soft on top of the soft, it doesn't really work. So I start with harder consistency, oil pastel. And then I go softer from there. Okay, and that's just the way I've been using oil pastels. You don't have to layer like I do. Um, but I like a lot of buildup of color. And uh, this is the way that I found that works for me. So I'm just going to color. Now we have this, uh, you know, the guardhouse here, but I'm just going to just go right over that. Not going to worry about the, the shack here right now. That's a detailed thing, and we'll do the details. That, that'll probably be a one of the final things we do for this for this painting is get that um, that get that guardhouse lighthouse whatever you want to call it in there. Okay, so this is the sky. And see, I'm just going to spread that really around a lot. Okay, right down. This will be the sea level of the sea. Hope I made that straight across. Well, we can always take a look at it back here to make sure it is. Okay, and uh, I know I was going to do a tiger painting, and I know I've been talking about it in uh, my last video, and I am going to do one, I promise you. Um, just today I felt like doing this scene, <laughs> and uh, the tiger one's going to be a little bit more involved, it's a lot more details, it's going to be bigger too, I plan to do it on a uh, either a 16 by 20 or an 18 by 24, so it's going to take a little bit more time. And uh, so I have time for something like this. And I don't know if I'll finish this today or not. I imagine, again, five or six hours until this is done. Okay, you can see how much I'm just taking the same stick and I'm just going over and over and over and over again. All right, it's important. Um, it's important just to do that, just deposit the color. And you can see as I do this, it shapes the stick, right? I start developing a, a flat edge and like an edge here, right? And that's how I get my oil pastels to get sharp, where it eventually will come down to a nice sharp little little point. And uh, when you get a sharp point like that, you can then get some lines and, and get some even uh, details that are easier to get when you have something like that. So I just kind of work it on the side like that. Okay, now let's go to this blue. Okay, this is again a cray pause. Okay, let's put some of this darker blue up here and up in the top just to see what that looks like. Okay, come down.
comes down here and we'll come back again with this more and more you can see how I just kind of keep going and just keep adding back and forth until I get enough oil pastel on that surface to start building up the color even if it doesn't look like it's adding much it is adding every little time I pass over it just adds a little bit more so eventually I can just take my fingers and just kind of spread it around kind of push it spread it and uh, make sure I get up into the edges here right where the paper meets the tape I want to get a nice clean edge when I pull that tape off I have a nice clean edge there Again, this is crepaz, and it's very easy to move like this um, just with my fingers on the smooth paper. You can see the texture of, uh, you can see where some parts of the oil pastel is heavier and then others you can kind of see that and you can just move that around literally I can kind of take a finger and kind of uh, kind of move it down try to cover up that paper as best I can if I press in too much on the smooth it almost starts to wipe it off the paper so I'm learning with how much pressure to add when I'm doing this on the smooth paper if I put too much in if I press in too hard and move it around I can literally wipe it off so that's kind of a learning thing as you're going through it. You kind of feel that as you're going, how much pressure to add if you're using a smoothness, a smooth paper like this. This is similar to how board also feels. The, the boards I use, the DaVinci Pro panels, it's got a smooth surface. And if I press in too much, then it, I can literally wipe the color right off. Okay, now obviously we got a very textured looking sky, but we have a very smooth sky over here. Don't worry about that. This is the first layer. And really the point of this is just to cover the paper up. I don't want to see white. Okay, that's the whole point of this stage. It's just to cover paper up so I don't see the white of the paper underneath. All right, now I could use a turp on this. Um, Mineral spirits, terpenoid. Okay, that would also do this with a brush, and I can also just spread the color around with that. Very versatile oil pastel is. You can use a terp with it, just like with oil paint. Okay, but you can see how easy it is just to do it with with my hands. Get right up to that edge. I tend to work um, top down, right? I'll start, especially with a sky like this, where it's a smooth sky, where there's no really any clouds. It's very easy just to start there, right? Work on this, get this right, and then kind of move down the painting. So I'm kind of thinking, as I'm thinking aloud here, how I'm going to go through this. I'm trying to, uh, as I think, I just verbalize it so you understand my thought process of this as I go through it. Okay. So very, very simple process. Again, I'm just going to take the same light blue. I'm going to go again right over this. Okay. And we're just going to fill in again. Okay. And don't worry about if I get marks. You know, this has got some, it's picking up some colors for like a gray and it's depositing here don't 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 worry about that that's going to happen and you just keep going all right you're going to cover it up so don't get uh, upset when you see that okay it's okay if it's a little dirty now in the beginning stages you see to doing that I can I can cover up that texture up a little bit more 
again we're really building up the layer of color here with the oil pastel build it up all right go back in my picture it keeps uh, timing out on me okay there we go all right let's get some more of this darker blue And we have a different blue down in the water. It's a little bit more of an ultramarine color. All right, so we'll grab a different stick for that. And you can see as I wipe, it really tries to wipe it off the surface. So I just kind of move it back. You can kind of move it around. It's interesting how it works on the smooth surface as compared to a textured paper. Textured paper, this would work very, very differently with this. I would, I'd be using a terp with a brush on textured paper. Like if we were using Arches cold press oil paper or the uh, any kind of like watercolor paper where you have a textured surface, I wouldn't be doing this by hand. It's uh, too too time consuming and too monotonous and too hard actually. Okay, but on the smooth stuff I can manipulate it like that very easily with just fingers. Okay, again going with the light stuff, light blue. Come back in over that again. You can see the the sky takes a while gets the, it takes a while to get to that right amount here. Let's move this down. Got to keep to remember to keep things in the camera here frame. So I look down at my iPhone to make sure that you guys are seeing here this correctly. another blue maybe we can find like an ultramarine more of an ultramarine color maybe um, something like this you can see the different shades of blue we have okay so that was the sky I think we'll try this for the water here just to see what that looks like so looking at my picture we have the the C in the background just goes right across here, trying to make that flat as you can. And then um, as it goes over, again, try to line that up so it is uh, straight across. Okay. best you can make that and then um, yeah this ultramarine I think will work see how easy now this is a um, I feel this might be a neo pastel feels very soft in my hands and the way I can spread that the way that looks feels very soft so this actually might be a neo pastel but a Mungio or just really something softer I think would work so neo pastel or Mungio you can see the texture of it is different than what the crepe paws left Okay, we'll have that big rock is going to be right there, and then this the sea water here is going to come up. Kind of comes up like this, and then it goes over. And this is all ocean, very shallow part of the these uh, this area, and then um, kind of cross right here. I'll spread that with my finger. spreads differently than the crepe paws does. It's a little bit more even. Okay, 
Okay, it's just easier to work with in general. Right up to that edge. Okay, here's where the tide's gonna break. It'll be a tide, a little wave here that's breaking. All right, we'll get that in later. Right now I'm just worried about covering up that white. Right, and here's the rest of that color here. And um, we're just gonna move it down into this area. So I'm gonna start coming in between the gray here and start depositing this blue in there. Now I, I'm gonna try to render underwater rocks. Okay, that'll come later on. But for right now, I just wanna cover the paper up um, and get this blue in there. All right, so it comes in between the rocks here. You can see a little blue kind of splashed in there, here and there. And I uh, will change the color because I can notice there's a little bit of a lighter blue there. But um, we'll, we'll do that later right now, just cover the paper. There'll be some rocks here and there. Okay, and then um, move these. Getting down towards the bottom here of this lip, so I gotta kind of bring it out a little. Be some water right here. Okay, and then we'll spread that out. You know, as I'm just kind of spreading like across, like this, kind of in horizontal fashion with the water try to keep that in mind when you're doing water is to spread it horizontal like this right it has it keeps that flat feeling um, effect easier I think over here I'm going to kind of move it up into the edge of that right where that tape is all right we're 30 minutes into this so far not that I'm timing myself but I try to stop at around the hour mark take a break and then keep going okay and looking at this water does it does it sit level? Is it leaning to one side or not? Is it leaning down? That's kind of what I'm looking at here. And I can kind of manipulate that with my finger here and kind of push up maybe. Kind of just seeing if it goes right across. Okay. Understand. Right now, we're covering the white. Covering the white of the paper. Okay. All right, not worried about final details here. Details of everything right now. Cover the white. I keep telling myself this over and over. Don't fret about details here just keep things simple spread the color out eventually the rocks will come into shape okay if you need to you can just add a little bit more color and again spread out Water's a lot of fun for me to paint. And uh, 
one of the things I've learned about doing it is how it always needs to lay flat, really important. So even in my blending stages at this stage, at the early on, I'm really focusing on blending it flat and horizontally rather than doing it like this. Okay, I want those strokes here to remain horizontal. You want that water to lay flat and horizontal. Unless I was doing a waterfall, in which case I would blend in the direction that the water is falling. Here, lost my. Uh... Okay. Kind of looking at how far the water comes up on this side. It might come up a little bit, a little bit more. There's a bunch of rocks right in, right here, and then some sand. Okay. Okay, now let's go to a darker, let's try a brown. I'll do this brown right here. This is a Cray Paws brown, and we're just going to use the brown. Just give me a darker value on these rocks, because I've got to use this light gray, and I need something now a little darker. So I'm going to take, take the brown, come back over, and just kind of lay in where those where the darkness is. If I look at here, if I look at the shadows of the rock, you can see where the light hits here. You can see where the shadow is here. You can see where the shadows are here. Okay, the dark parts. We'll use the brown for that. Okay, brown or blue would work. I'll just go with brown since that's what I have here. Um, and this is where the shadow is. Kind of define where that meets the sand part here. Okay, and there's a real light area kind of here. But it's dark, kind of right there. It is dark right there. I'm looking at my reference for flowing, finding, finding the lights, finding the darks. Okay, we'll start. We'll start thinking about the shadows right now. Okay, same with this rock over here. Most of it seems kind of dark to me. Okay, but we can get to find the shape of it maybe a little bit more. It's kind of mostly dark. Here. Kind of spread that around. Kind of defining the shape of that rock as it sticks out a little bit easier, and it's pretty dark right in there. And I'll have to correct the sky where there's a little gray right there, so I'll have to come back with the bat blue and kind of correct that with the blue. But um, this is the gray paws, just a regular brown, like a medium brown. You can see with the color, it's kind of a dark brown actually. Uh, but we'll use that for a little shadow here. I can push that around. If I push in too much, I can just really move it off the paper. So I just kind of manipulate it here with my finger, very amounts of pressure. Sometimes I'll do a little circle thing like this to kind of move it around like that. Probably gonna come in with some blues here for the shadow parts, but right now we'll just use the brown. Okay, down here there'll be some sand. thinking about light and shadow at this point. Okay, so down here we'll also go with this brown and kind of define a little bit more of these rocks. And I'm gonna kind of focus on the foreground rocks, the ones here at the bottom, which are bigger in size as compared to the rocks in the middle area here. So I'm gonna kind of 
put in some shapes of rocks here kind of where that gray is sitting at just kind of looking there in my picture kind of just a general shape of the darkness parts okay and over here there's like a rock big rocks here It's pretty much all dark right in that front part right there. We'll cut in the, the water into it a little bit later. And over here. continue up through it little marks here and there little rocks are sticking out of the water here and there I can see that right. just a general idea of that that photo I, obviously this is not exact I'm not painting every single little rock in its exact place that would be way too way too boring and I don't want to do that all right just uh Get a general sense of it. Mostly dark here. I want to cover that gray up some. We'll come back in with a lighter highlight here to, to differentiate the rocks itself, but keep the bigger rocks here, bigger marks here in the foreground. And down here, it's kind of hard to work off the edge. Here, so I kind of have to move it down a little bit more. Kind of bigger stuff kind of comes out. something that looks like a rock right about here another one right about there all right it's kind of random random spots here and there more or less all right just making a dark mark that's all it really is I'm going to take my finger and spread that dark, on, especially in this middle section where it's just a bunch of rocks together here. Don't really see a lot of water where the massive little rocks here are kind of building up. And then here, these ones, you can kind of push in the color, kind of spread it around, cover stuff. See this scene slowly starts to build out as you go through it.
time. We're at 47 minutes. So, I might take a little break here and pretty soon. Clean off my hands. And then we'll just keep going. We'll just keep adding layers and layers and layers and layers until we are done. And every layer we add, every more color we add, and we get more detailed with it, things start to shape up a little bit more and more and more. We can start adding lights and more shadows to it. So with every layer that gets added, you just get more and more detailed with it. a little bit more water here so I'll add some blue to this section here some water that comes in here Trying to find a clean finger here to kind of move this blue around. Sometimes it's a pinky. You can kind of use the blue now to cut into the areas here. Right, as we define it a little bit more and more every time we go through. And again, thinking about that water sting level, notice I'm I am stroking the color like sideways horizontal and I blend it horizontal just to keep that in my head that we're making water and it helps to make it look realistic when we're blending it and rendering it in this in the horizontal flat motion the way water sits I have a feeling this is a like neo pastel which is fine at this stage um, with water I'm okay with it. I think I'll be able to layer on top of it, no problem. It's okay if it gets a little dirty here. That'll actually help us with the making the underwater rocks come be come out. Here, so this is where that water, there's like a little light wave here that's breaking. Let's go ahead and cover right there. We'll come back in with um, probably some light grays and make that look a little better. using this ultramarine blue for this part here this part of the water you see the difference in the blues the sky and the water just like the picture different in the blues 
it's okay if I smear the brown and the blue together. It's fine. We'll clean it up here. I should probably take a break, clean my hands off, and then keep going with the sky and kind of keep adding more layers. To that. I really want a smooth sky here, and it's really textured right now, so we need to fix that up. But I want to add some more blue within this brown stuff to indicate that there's water in between rocks here. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a break. So I'm going to clean my hands. So just use these wipes here. Start with clean hands here. take a look between painting and photo you kind of see where I'm going with the mass of rocks see that mass of rocks just a bunch of little rocks where you don't see a lot of water kind of this section right here and you see the shallow water here that's what I'm building here with some of the bigger rocks here like like this one and these here that will be this All right you can see where this main piece is it's gonna be right here and you can see over here this this part right there that'll be there and then we have the water we have the beach right there I left a lot of white of the paper there we'll come in with the ochre or a, like a tan kind of khaki brown color for the for the um, for the sand and then we have the sky there but let's go ahead and take a break it's been exactly 54 minutes so I'm gonna take a little break here